Hi, this is Bill Raymond. I've been working with Azure for the past few months, and it took me a while to get familiar with it. So I want to show you the things that I've learned. I'm going to break this out into three videos. So this is the first of a three-part video series. This video is going to cover creating and managing resource groups and resources. The second video is going to cover managing your dashboard and creating your own dashboards and pinning items to the dashboard. And then finally, the third video is going to cover using the command line user interface to manage your Azure environment. After you sign up for Microsoft Azure, you're going to have a portal. And you can always access that portal by going to portal.azure.com. Before we go and look at all these different options here, I'm going to walk you through the basic elements on this screen. When you open a browser and go to portal.azure.com, you're going to be presented with a page that looks something like this. Along the left-hand side are a list of resources and services that you can add to your solutions. Now, I'm going to get into this in more detail, so for right now, just know that there's a whole lot of them, and that little More Services link even shows you a lot more that's available to you. At the top of the screen, we have the words Microsoft Azure. Whenever you click Microsoft Azure, it'll bring you back to your main dashboard page. To the right of that is Search Resources. That allows you to search for all those things that are along the left-hand side. Remember I said there's a lot of different services and, and resources available to you, so you can easily search for them and gain access to them using that search bar. To the right of that is a little chime, and that's a notification icon that lets you know whether or not there's something that you need to pay attention to. Here I happen to have two notifications about my billing, so I'm not going to open that up. But as you'll see later, when you set up resources, it will sometimes take Azure a little while to get those things going. So this thing will let you know that it's still working, and then it will let you know when it's done. To the right of that is an icon to run the command line. This allows you to run command lines commands without actually having to install anything on your computer. To the right of that is a icon that allows you to modify settings. To the right of that is a little feedback icon where you can say to Microsoft, hey, I like or don't like this page. Here's some feedback feature requests. To the right of that is an online help icon. And further to the right of that is information about your personal account. Before we even get started, you may not like this dark theme that's being used, so you can actually modify that. Just take your mouse and put it into any kind of a blank area on the dashboard and double click. I'm using the left mouse button. I'm just double clicking again and again and again. So there's a few of these different color schemes that you can choose from. You can just decide which one you like the best. I'm going to stick with this dark mode. Think of Microsoft Azure as a set of services. You can decide how many of those services that you want to use and then plug them all together to create an application. Or you can just install a virtual machine and inside that virtual machine, you can do all your software development on Windows or Linux or whatever operating system you're comfortable with. Before you create a resource, what you want to do is create what's called a resource group. A resource group logically groups things together that are related. So, for example, we're going to create a fake, we're not actually going to program anything, but we're going to create a fake expense reporting application. And so what you want to do is put all the resources that expense reporting application needs in its own logical group. This way, let's say that you are working on a separate application, maybe some invoicing application, and you'll put that in its own resource group. They're separ separated and there's some security by, behind that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and choose resource groups. And the first thing that I'm going to point out here is this is what it's like to add almost any kind of resource in Azure. First, it lists out any of the resource types that you already have. It allows you to filter them because you might want to modify them. And you can also add columns to display certain elements of the resource that might be helpful to you. What I'm going to do is click the Add button here. And what's going to happen is this resource group panel will show up. Now these panels 
display on what Microsoft calls a blade. What's a blade? Well, basically, think of this as a wizard. You're starting at the left-hand side, and now you have to take another action, so you're going to the right-hand side. As you can see at the bottom of the screen here, I can scroll horizontally. And so as I'm creating things, these windows might expand. I might have more windows. In this case, I only have one. But let me just show you again. I'm going to close this, and I have the resource groups. And now when I click Add, the blade opens up and shows me this resource group dialog. So I'm just going to create a fake expense report app. I'll call this BR for Bill Raymond expense app resource group and I'll just choose a location don't worry this location does not mean you have to create your application in central US that's just where the resource group is located and then I'm gonna go ahead and choose pin to dashboard you'll see what that does in just a moment and then click create now before I click create I want to call your attention to this notification bar at the top there you're going to notice that very quickly the resource group gets created and I'm going to get another notification. So I'm going to click create now. Keep an eye on the notification icon. There. Okay, so very quickly it said the resource group was created. I got a new notification. I'm not going to click on this because it has billing information. And then it brought me to my expense app resource group area. And so now here are essentially the properties for that resource group. Along the left hand side I can see an activity log, the access control, I can set tags, I can do a whole bunch of different things with this resource group. Right now all I need is the resource group and all the important things are already taken care of for me by Azure. Back here at the dashboard you'll see there's a new web part that got displayed. And this little web part here is titled Resources, and you can see BR Expense App RG. There's that resource group we just created. It also says there's no resources in the group. That's because we haven't done anything yet. We haven't said we want a database or we want to create a web app yet. We just created the group itself. Now that we've created a resource group, we can go ahead and add our services into it. So I'll go ahead and go to app services along the left hand side here. And then I'm going to choose add. What Microsoft presents me with is a number of different types of resources that are available. And there's lots of them. So this is basically a marketplace of different types of apps that I can create. Now Microsoft provides you with some uh, scaffolding here. So you could just say I want to create a web app or I could choose a web app plus SQL. Or you could choose web app and then add your own database manually. You don't have to choose this option. I'm just going to go ahead and choose web app. And you can see once again this blade is being displayed so I can scroll left and right. And since I clicked web app here on the right hand side, I now have a pane asking me, what do I want to do? Well, first of all, it's letting me know uh, that I can use this to create websites, Microsoft Azure websites. So I'll go ahead and choose create. And now what I'm going to do is enter a name for my app. Now here's another unique thing with Microsoft Azure. When you're creating certain things, it has to be unique. So for example, it has to be something at .azurewebsites.net. So I need to create a unique name for my app. And I'm just going to call this BR Expense App. And what will happen is Azure will check and make sure that I can use this domain URL. And if it can, they, I get a little checkbox, ask me the subscription to use. And then it says, what's the resource group you want to use? Now remember, we created one ourselves earlier, but you can actually create one from the screen. I'm going to choose Use Existing, and then choose that resource group that I created earlier. Then I need to choose the app service location. 
And what it's doing is it's suggesting a service plan that I use. Now here I can choose this S1 service plan, but what exactly is that? I don't know what that means. I'm not familiar with Azure yet, so I can go ahead and click create new instead. And once again, along the blade, I have another pane that opens up and it asks me to type the name for my app service plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new app service plan and call this BR Expense App Service Plan SP. And then I'm going to choose a pricing tier. And ah, now I can see that that S1 is a standard server with a certain amount of RAM in it and I have you know various options here. What I'm going to do is come down to the bottom and you'll see that there's an F1 which is free. Since I'm just building a basic web app right now and I'm not ready to start incurring costs I can choose this and then I can come back and choose a different pricing tier later. So I'll choose select. Notice that that pane disappeared and now we have less panes over here and I'll go ahead and click OK. And then finally, we're back to creating our web app. And I'll just go ahead and click Create. Back at the dashboard, things might seem a little bit confusing here because along the left-hand side, we have this app service and our app service plan, which we see also over here. But keep in mind, this one is showing us just for the expense app resource group, where this one over here on the left is showing me all resources I create independent of the resource group they happen to be in. Now I can create a really nice application, but it won't be too useful without a database back end. And you can see over here on the left hand side, Azure says I have two options, SQL database and Azure Cosmos DB. Well, in fact, there's actually many more options for resources in, and databases that aren't listed here. So for example, if I come down here to the bottom of the page and click more services, you can see there is a laundry list of services that are not listed along the left-hand side. So I'm just gonna close this whoop, by clicking this X here and instead search resources. And this is something that I think you should really get used to using, especially as you're just getting familiar with Azure. Now I'm gonna type database and you can see here that there's a whole bunch of da different databases that I can create. Now I'm going to choose Azure Cosmos DB because that is actually here, but I'm just gonna choose this one because this is Microsoft's latest technology. And you'll notice I once again can click add here. There's also an option to create one, but it's the same thing. So I'll just go ahead and click add. And I'm going to go ahead and type an account ID. Now, this is what's interesting about Azure Cosmos DB. I'm not sure if Microsoft's going to take this further with other technologies. But when you see Cosmos account IDs, what they mean is essentially the name of the database. Uh, now this database can contain multiple databases, which is why I think they call it an account ID, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just gonna go ahead and type BR expense app DB. And what happens now? It says there's a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and mouse over here and it says it can only contain lowercase letters, numbers, and a dash. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that DB. But it looks like I can, if I want, maybe make this a little bit more human legible by using the dash. The next thing I can do is choose the API. And here's where I can choose the type of database that I want. In this particular case, I'm just gonna choose a table type database. And then I'm going to use the res resource group that I created earlier and click create. Okay, we're back at the dashboard and we're wrapping up this video. There's a few last things that I want to show you. 
First, we of course do have our new database set up. And I also want to highlight a few things. One, we created a resource group first. And after we created that resource group, we added resources underneath it. We can add the resources by selecting the items here on the left, or we can search for the resource and then create it from there. We also know that we can find all of the resources by clicking more resources down here at the bottom of the screen and scrolling through them. Now, one of the things that I didn't point out was how to delete a resource. So that's the final thing we're going to do here. I'm going to come over here and delete this database account ID because I realized, you know, I'm kind of using this naming scheme where I'm putting RG next to resource group and SP next to service plan. So why don't I put dash DB here? Earlier I had typed capital DB and it warned me that I can't do that. So I'd rather come back and add this again, but putting a dash lowercase db. So I'm going to go ahead and select this resource. And the next thing I'm going to do is click on overview. In the overview section, almost every time you go to the overview section, you'll always see a delete option with a little trash can. So I'm going to go ahead and click delete account. And Azure is always going to ask you to confirm the account name. So I can go ahead and type BR expense app, but you know, I might type it incorrectly. So what I like to do is just copy the text, paste it here, and then the delete option appears down here at the bottom of the screen and I'll click delete. And now it says deleting. So at some point, this database will be deleted and I'll get a notification up here at the top of the screen. So that's it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to configure your dashboard. Please note that I will have already created the new database account ID that's called br-expenseapp-db. So you can do that on your own if you're following along. Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if this was a useful video for you, and please subscribe to our channel. It's really helpful for us if you're looking for more videos. Thank you.